वेलकम टू मेन स्ट्रीम विद हरप्रीत सिंह तूर आप सबू प्यार भरी सत श्रीकाल नमस्कार अदाब एंड शलोम वैल द ब्रेकिंग न्यूज़ ऑफ कोर्स यू नो यू ऑलरेडी हैव हर्ड एंड लेटर ऑन यू विल हियर इट ऑन द मुद्दा आल्सो दैट व्हाट वी हैव फॉक्स न्यूज़ वर्सेस डोमिनियन के सेटलमेंट दैट्स द डिटेल्स आर स्टिल कमिंग आउट दोज आर स्केची डिटेल्स but it is one of the biggest settlement out of the 2020 election we will see down the road what's going on and uh, how and what could happen uh, <clears throat> but the thing which i'm going to talk about right now even though we have a guest later on coming with us a special guest who is uh, we are going to talk about new york city and some of the statistics and uh, uh, the flow of the guns and the crime etc 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 but uh, till then till the guest join us there are few things which i want to discuss uh, i'm going to start with the, again with the punjab situation and about amrit pal singh i still refuse to accept the the what the government is trying to tell us that they don't know where amrit pal is because for me if they don't know where he is then it's a shame on them and they they should have known that where he is if they don't then there is something amiss okay first it was a creation and then after they created it now they are talking about that they don't know where uh, he is and how uh, they can find it but in the meantime they are finding his colleagues and the people who are actually uh, <coughs> associated with him so they already know about that but in the meantime what is happening is they are actually picking up the young kids and they are putting them behind the bars they are using all these uh, rules and regulation the laws some of the laws which were passed by uh, the current government where they have this some sort of national security act where they can pick up somebody just by claiming that he is a threat to the country that's it and they can pick him up the courts they may not make a judgment on that uh, they may not um, know uh, what's going on the family of the person who is arrested so there are people who have been arrested and they are like that that's a shame number 2 we should not forget that 2024 is very important year for both for india and united states in india the elections are going to happen around april may of 2024 for the lok sabha and in 2024 usa has the presidential election coming up so lok sabha election actually is which will determine the prime minister modi's achievements but then again there are, for me the question comes in prime minister modi last time when the election took place in 2019 right 3 months before the election pulwama ha- happened 11 agencies gave input that uh, there is a, an intelligence that there will be an attack on the crp and those intelligence reports were ignored the people did not pay any attention to it and ultimately 40 people ended up paying with the price with their life and yes uh, prime minister modi became prime minister modi again and uh, this time they are planning to go even bigger than that and they are putting up some of the opposition people uh, using all the tools at their disposal uh, like uh, you know um, fbi c uh, they have raw and they also have their central bureau of investigation and enforcement directorate they are using all that to arrest these people or calling them in and creating one case after another false cases so that they can then actually keep them either behind the bars or off the actual issues the issues are of course the corruption and uh, non availability of the basic facilities and uh, yes uh, there are f- a few corporations uh, who are making billions out of that and uh, when they go out for, uh, to different countries uh, the deals are made like uh, rafael deal on the french 
literally in France, the reports were printed that how the money transactions took place to take that deal to the conclusion. But nothing happened in Indian press. Why? Because Indian press is not independent the way it pretends to be. And those who are, there are few uh, reporters who are really good at it. And those are already behind the bars for one reason or the other. And uh, they are using all this. So you called somebody by name. If you have a freedom of press, they need to learn what freedom of press is. Even though here in the United States, we have our own issues. But when it comes down to talking freedom and uh, those kind of issues, they need to learn from here. And look at the media. Just today, Fox for falsifying, giving the wrong reports, they are paying, uh, you know, more than $787 million out of their money. That's definitely going to hurt somebody. And I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that they reached a settlement because it would have been even worse than what it is now. But I'm still waiting to get the details because there are going to be some of the reporters who are actually reporting all these false claims, including one of uh, the gentleman who happens to be a mayor of New York City at one point when the World Trade Center happened. And he was known as a mayor of uh, uh, the United uh, States of America. And all of a sudden, we see him standing at all this rundown shop, you know, the black uh, um, hair colors running on his cheeks and claiming that elections were stolen. And nobody has explained to me still that how on the same ballot your Republican colleagues won and Trump lost, you refuse to accept Trump's loss, but you accept the other results. And in the meantime, the people, the general public, uh, they are paying the price. There are more hardline divisions in the rest of the United States. But today, here on this show, we will have somebody where we know how to live with each other, how to respect each other, and how to work together by keeping your identities, your language, your culture, respecting each other, but at the same time being different but equal, being free but respectful. And that is something which we will be dealing with. That's uh, something which we are going to do. And uh, we are going to go into a break. And after the break, we definitely are going to explore all those, including how in Republican states the gun laws are being changed. And those changes on the gun laws, they are affecting us right here in New York City, even though uh, New York City has their own uh, safety laws which Supreme Court tried to kill, even though it is being challenged. I don't know where we will end up with those laws, but one thing is for sure that within New York City, within New York State comparatively, in, even New Jersey, we are comparatively much, much safer on this East Coast, starting from New Jersey to New York to Massachusetts, Connecticut, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, yes, uh, there are some political differences. You may have some elected Republicans like Sununu, but then Sununu is again somebody who does not agree all the time with Trump, which is really surprising. And uh, I still have to see, hear something from Trump against Sununu. But DeSantis is another story in Florida who is going after the businesses. So it is uh, for me, when we do this show, I talk about all these issues because these issues, even though some of the issues like uh, Russian war on Ukraine, for, uh, for some people they are like, oh, it does not affect us. Yes, it does. With the inflation, it is affecting us, whether it's uh, uh, diesel and gas or it is the, your daily few, uh, food items on the shelves. It does affect us. And yes, on top of everything else, if we talk about democracy, democracy always demands sacrifices. And we over here in the United States, we know what the sac sacrifices are during World War II. Yes, U.S. did not enter the World War till it got attacked by Japanese in Pearl Harbor. But when they did, 
they achieved what needed to be achieved and then they tried to make um, about uh, what it should be and how it should be and now before the break uh, we are going to talk to the person who i have been talking about then i'm we are going to go for the break uh, our honorable district attorney and very very good friend of the sick community and south asian community uh, who actually is keeping her eyes and ears to the ground against the crime uh, district attorney melinda katz great to be here thank you for having me thanks for coming in it's an honor to have you here and um, you heard me what we are talking about about yes. the guns and safety um, before we go into question answer let me have your say on what you heard so far well first of all Harpy, thank you for having me and second you know i value uh, the media that goes into people's <coughs> homes uh, and the people that are watching from all over the country uh, and from all over the world. Uh, as you know, 49% of Queens residents were born somewhere else. 49%, think about that, of those that filled out the census, that bothered to sit down and fill out the census, and we know that that's not everybody. 49% of those individuals were born outside the United States and decided to make Queens County their home. And I think that is the greatest gift that we could give the rest of the country is our diversity. And so I think it's important that we not only celebrate our parents, but our parents before them while assimilating into the United States of America. And this type of media, people like you who understand the community and are part of the community, I see you at gurdwars, I see you at, at mosques, I see you at synagogues, I see you everywhere and you are part of the community. And to be able to deliver information into people's homes and in a way that is understandable and that a way that is um, um, key uh, to the understanding of Americans and American politics and government, and especially our great little borough of Queens County, uh, I really appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me. It's my job to keep the borough safe, to make sure that uh, people can pray how they want, be from any country in the world, feel comfortable, uh, and we do that every single day. And yes, you are correct, the gun laws matter. The gun laws matter. Guns aren't being created in the, in the Queens County, in the borough of Queens County. They're not being created in New York State. They're being created other places, like in the South, and they're being sold in the South, and they're being brought up what's called the Iron Pipeline, which is the East Coast of the United States. And they're being sold to our children here in Queens County. And that is something we can't put up with. We need to make sure that we prosecute those drivers of crime. We need to make sure that we prosecute the gang members, the drivers of crime that have the gun trafficking rings. But at the same time, we need to make sure the young people are not taking the same guns that we just got off the street. We need to make sure that they understand that there's mentors and teachers and uh, folks that care deeply about their future. That's the way we need to do it. The safest place in the borough is when people are never in my courtroom. Well, you know, it's interesting you talked about that uh, capturing the gun and uh, then, um, um, you know, not going back on the street. But the, that AR-16 which killed those young kids, that is being put up for auction in one of the state. I forgot what state it is. Well, that's why we live in Queens County. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that we live true. in Queens that County. That is true. It is important to note that, you know, New York State is a, is a novel state. We have very strong gun laws here. When they were, they were uh, pushed down from the Supreme Court of the United States, we redeveloped new gun laws and redra redrafted, re-legislated, made sure the governor uh, and the governor made sure to sign the new laws straight away to make sure that we would still have constitutionally valid uh, gun laws in the state of New York. Well, first of all, you know, I should have mentioned that, um, but it's never late. Thank you for starting celebration of West Hockey at City Hall, uh, Queensboro Hall. My you pleasure. know, you were the first one who actually, uh, honestly, she was the first Queensboro president who started celebrating West Hockey at Queensboro Hall. Helen Marshall Hall, that's what it is yes, called. Yes, the Helen right? Marshall Atrium. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, again, that Helen Marshall was the first elected African American woman to be the president of Queensboro. Yes. Right? Yes. And then you followed. And I followed. <laughs> I followed. Before you became a district attorney. That is so true. So thank you for that. Now, talking about, you know, uh, the MS 13, 
which is active all around us. Okay, I know you are actively <coughs> chasing, and you made a couple of arrests on that. Yes, uh, I want you to share the parts which the parents of the kid they should know because they can feel safe at home. That okay, you know what? Our kids, if they are going out, we can trust that law and order, the police department here and the district attorney here. Uh, you want to talk about that? Well, I can tell you that I believe in accountability. Accountability can come in many <coughs> forms. Accountability could mean jail time because you're bringing guns in from the south. You're bringing out the iron pipeline and selling them to my children. Accountability could also be you're part of the crypts. And you have young kids. I do have a 12 and a 14 year old. There you go. You know, they're much bigger than I am, one of them at least. and. Uh, you know, but they're still my babies. Yeah, of course. God <laughs> still bless Still my them. babies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> we, we need to make sure that we have that accountability. And, you know, when I did, the, we did a three-year investigation after Amir Griffin was killed uh, at, in Baisley, uh, three, four years ago now, I guess it was. We started a... In the Baisley Park. In the Baisley Park. I was yeah. not the district attorney mm -hmm. at the time, but I yeah. came in a few mm -hmm. months later. Yeah. We actually indicted and are prosecuting uh, the alleged uh, murderer uh, right now. But it's also part of a bigger investigation that we did on conspiracy on the gang world and the gang activities. And so out of that, we arrested 33 people who were drivers of crime in Southeast Queens. And right before that, a few months before that, we also prosecuted um, about 23 gang members out of Queensbridge, uh, and different areas of Western Queens. So it's not like one neighborhood thing. It's not just this type, particular type of gang. It is a gamut of uh, the activity. We are taking folks off the street. We are arresting them for that activity. We're also arresting them for the conspiracy of the activity, right? It's not just about the shooters, although I will tell you that out of 33 of the individuals we just arrested, 18 of them are alleged shooters. Six of their victims were innocent bystanders who were not the intended target of the shooter. So it's extremely important that we follow up. It's extremely important that the resources be used for that. I think people should feel that in this borough there is that sense that if people are coming after you, we will find them and we will hold them accountable. Look, I have two kids. They go to public school. When they walk out the door, with their knapsacks and, you know, ready to face the mm -hmm, world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what parent doesn't worry? Oh, Every yeah, parent worries. Yeah, of course. Um, and so I make this borough the safest I can possibly make it. You know, uh, within Punjabi community, I'm pretty sure in other communities also, uh, domestic violence mm -hmm. uh, is there. That's a big issue. So there are two actually top priorities which I would like you to tackle. Uh, I know you are already on it, but uh, I want you to share, number one, domestic violence, number two, uh, Sandeep committed a suicide that was also, you are still trying to figure out some of the things, which I know we cannot talk about it, but how you intend to, you know, make the public aware, the Punjabi community and non-Punjabi uh, South Asian communities, because they are always afraid of the police. So they do not come out to the cops because of their inherent experience from the back home. So how you are working and how you expect that it will change and uh, what to expect and how much you have succeeded so far? Because of the diversity <coughs> in Queens County, uh, we face a lot of cultural challenges all over the borough of Queens, right? And as borough president, I do think that one of the advantages I have as district attorney was that I was the borough president before. So I visited and got to know the communities all over this borough. And I would not only go to people's homes for meals and dinners and all the great food that's around this borough, but I would go to the mosques. I would go to the gurdwaras. I would go to the synagogues. We still have to have it, uh, food together. We haven't had it yet. But anyway, go ahead. I go to the <laughs> temples. I, you know, I became, <coughs> I became very familiar with the cultures around the borough years ago. Uh, and I value that as the district attorney. In fact, when I became the DA, I started as part of the employment that my ADAs have to go out into the community as well. They have to learn the community in which they're prosecuting in. You cannot be a good prosecutor unless you know the community in which you're prosecuting. The habits, the, char the, uh, the culture, the, the uh, uh, religions, all of that that comes with that. Um, and so I think it's extremely important that we uh, make sure that we, that we have prosecutors that understand um, the community. Domestic violence is one of those um, uh, crimes 
that is underreported, uh, and people are afraid to report it. Uh, there, are, there are gaps in the culture, there are uh, influences from back home, uh, from the country they're from. I will just say that in my office, number one, nobody ever asks about documentation. It's not an issue. Number two, we care about the victim and we care about bringing the victim and any children to safety. So one can call the hotline, which I developed, 718-286. Four four one zero. So uh, you want to repeat that number? I'm going to repeat it right now. Camera, and then we'll go for a break. Then we'll continue. I'm going to repeat it right now. Seven one eight two eight six four four one zero. Someone will answer it, and they will ask you whether or not you need services, a place to live. Do you need food? Do you need a psych, you know, psychiatric care? Do you need drug rehabilitation? Whatever it is. Uh, or just you need or to maybe get maybe you just have need young to get kids out of my home. Real young kids and well, that's you right. And I have questions about my young kids. If I leave my if I leave uh, my abuser, uh, do my kids still get to go to the same school? Where would I live? Do I have to look for a shelter myself? Will you help me find a shelter? See, this is this is the stuff which we need to understand. The services which are available and uh, different agencies including district attorney is working on it let's take a small break after the break we will be right back welcome back to mainstream we are right now here with the queensborough district attorney uh, former president of queensborough um, which is an honor to have her on the show and talk about how the district attorney's office can actually help the, our communities um, we were talking about domestic violence. Yes. Um, I personally know something, you know, uh, being active in community, which you know that. Um, some ladies, they come to me, and at least two of them, they had their husbands in NYPD, and they had issues. You know, district attorney's office at that point did uh, step into it. I don't know where the case is, but I want you to talk about where we were that if there is a domestic violence or domestic abuse taking place, how the biggest concern of especially a mother, kids, the food on the table, sure. the school which they go to, and if that person who is abusing her okay, will not take advantage of the kids and try to blackmail her. So that's where we were. So now I will leave it to you again. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll continue and say that we have that hotline that I talked about. And those of you that went to go get your pens during the break, it's 718-286-4410. Uh, uh, we tend to go out to the community. Like we'll go to a library because some people aren't allowed to go anywhere else except to the library with their kids. Uh, we try to go into the community to talk about it. Um, we, have, we have a few things. Number one, we have the Family Justice Center. And their only job is to help families who uh, have, are in abusive relationships, child victims, uh, people who need to get out of a relationship, uh, and uh, those that need assistance. I believe in a wraparound service for victims of crimes. And that's all crimes, right? If you're a victim of a crime, the DA's office should be more than prosecutors of that defendant. We should also be able to help take care of the victim and the victim's family. And so when you are an abused person, uh, you know, for any culture, and it's not easy to talk about in a lot of cultures, and I understand that, um, but you should be able to talk yeah, to us. Yeah, that is very important because especially in South Asian cultures, yes. the women, they just keep so much quiet, you know, and I know instances where the uh, mm -hmm. lady will tell the kids go into the closet don't come out till i say come out right i'm pretty sure you have heard of those stories too and and we are always happy to help it's not just about prosecuting the abuser it's also about getting you the services that you need and the children the services that they need and it's also about protecting you so for instance if you call the hotline there will be two questions asked of you. Do you want services or do you want to speak to an assistant district attorney? And you can say, I just want to know what's available to me. I want to know what I can do. I want to know what my options are. Can you help me with that? And we will help you with that. We don't care about uh, documentation. We actually have an immigra immigration lawyer on staff to oh, help. By the way, that also brings us that New York City is that... Uh, 
uh, like Trump uh, called it one of those. Uh, uh, well, he gave a special name to a couple of the cities. Uh, I only know uh, that we don't. I, we don't. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, in New York City, it doesn't matter whether you have social security number or not. You are here undocumented. People call illegal. I don't. Either you are documented or you are undocumented. You are not illegal. Okay. So those services are available. Uh, the difference before we go into uh, that they want services or they want to get in touch with the DA's office. What's the difference if they go to DA's office instead of the service? Well, normally people will call <coughs> and ask for an ADA when they actually want to press charges against their abuser. Okay. You don't always know what you want to do when you call. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people just need advice. Uh, and social service agency can give that to you. I'm not really a social service agency, although we do have a lot of victims advocates on staff. Uh, and I think that's an important part of what we do. But you need to be able to know your options. I think anybody, uh, and options give you power. And it's important when you're going to make life changes uh, that you feel that you're powerful enough and that you have backup and that you have a, a, an office that's willing to help. And that's extremely important and it depends, uh, and, and it doesn't depend on what culture you're from. You should always know that you have backup when you need it. Uh, and that's part of what we do. We prosecute for domestic violence, we hold people accountable, but we also help the victims get out of the life and make sure that they are uh, squared away with their it's, children. It's like somebody has your back, you do somebody not has have your back. to, you know, uh, that district attorney here is talking about that district attorney has your back, okay? Um, so now going down to the other part, you know, um, the gun, flow of the guns sure. right now. Because, uh, yes, even though overall, statistically, two things which I want you to talk about. One is the flow of the guns and the other, the bail law. Mm -hmm. Because in Albany right now, there is a, a log jam. Right now, I think they reached some agreement today about the reform and the bail laws. Some of the elected officials are saying that the judges do not understand what it is and vice versa. You want to comment on that? Where so do we the bail, stand on the bail laws? The bail laws changed for a reason. The bail laws changed because people of color were inordinately being put into jail before the trial. And so it went one way. And it said, well, OK, we're not going to uh, have any bail for any crimes that are misdemeanors or nonviolent felonies. So that went that way. Last year, there were some changes in the law. It was already passed last year, which said that if you commit a retail crime more than once, you can actually uh, arrest the individual, put them through central booking, and then ask for some sort of securing order, some sort of bail. So that changed last year, and I would say that's been relatively successful. But there's other changes that are coming down the pike. Uh, as of the, the filming today, um, you know, they, they are talking about getting rid of what's called the least restrictive component of a bail ask. So right now, the judges are required to um, use a least restrictive bail in order to make sure that defendants return to court. And that, that ended up being a very controversial issue uh, in that the community. That was the biggest controversial issue. Yes. I can say that. Issue. I don't know about you, but I can say no, that. No, it was yes. a controversial yes. issue because <clears throat> then the, the idea is that if you don't have the dangerous component, if I can't go into court and argue that someone, uh, in fact, has proven to be a danger to the community, uh, that is not a, uh, a standard that the court is allowed to use in order to put bail on someone. They have to use the least restrictive in order to show back up in court again. So right now in Albany, as we're filming today, uh, they are talking about getting rid of that least restrictive component and giving judges pretty much full discretion um, on whether or not they uh, give someone bail. So mm. you, you rob somebody. That's interesting because, you know, I myself uh, spent uh, more than 32, 33 hours behind the bars, somebody claiming I beat him up when I was 50 miles away. Right. And um, yeah, I can understand that on, it was not during your t tenure, it was uh, D.A. Brown's tenure. And everything was being done that I should admit. And I said, no, I think it is called ACD, something like that. You probably would know they wanted me to admit that. Acquittal in contemplation yeah. and dismissal. And I said, no, I said either put me behind the bars for something which I did not do or right. uh, dismiss. Yeah, ultimately I succeeded. So the question I'm trying to ask here is when bail law reforms, I, I ended up putting up the bail. Okay. Right. When the bail law reform took place and where we stand today, okay, 
how it will the new addition whatever you're talking about where the uh, discretion the judges will have more discretion what do as a community should ex we expect as a safety measure against those people who are committed to do it again and again well, first of all, those that uh, commit the same crime over and over again, normally the bail issue comes up on a lot of different ways. We ask for bail a lot of times, and you know it's at, still at the judge's discretion whether or not they give it. It's still at the judge's discretion on how much they give, uh, whether someone should be remanded, whether it should be electronic monitoring. You know, at the end of the day, we can ask. The judges make the final decisions, as they should, right? The courtroom is a three-party th system. You got the prosecutor, you got the defense lawyer, each of us has a job, and you have a judge. I consider my job to be following the evidence. That's what my job is. I don't win or lose cases. You follow the evidence, and then the jury decides, the grand jury decides to indict, uh, a, a jury decides to convict, um, and I think those are important measures. I, I think, you know, even under the bail laws now, and even under the legislation that now exists, we are able to get prosecutions. I'll, you know, I'll give you an example, the 33 people that we just arrested and are prosecuting for gang activity in uh, Southeast Queens it was in this time. We've done it in Western Queens, we've done it all over the borough. Um, but in just a few weeks ago, we found and prosecuted 33 individuals after the Amir Griffin murder in Baisley Park. Uh, and you know that was a three-year investigation. It took a lot of resources, a lot of power, um, to be able to conclude that investigation. So my point is, should the laws be changed and should they be different? Sure. But we also can't use that as sort of the roadblock for everything that we indeed can do under the present laws. I don't allow it to be a roadblock. We continue to do our job. We continue to hold drivers of crime um, responsible. And I think that's an important component of what we're doing today. Okay. Uh, another factor, I don't know how much uh, uh, discretion, discretionary power you would have or recommendation to uh, NYPD uh, commissioner to appoint in language officers in the area where the actually the community they belong to because I do come across sometime you know uh, Bengali speaking people serving in those uh, precincts where no Bengali lives and uh, whereas the, we have Hillside Avenue Jamaica area where we have so many Bengalis uh, we see a few and rare Bengali police officers and I personally believe that if like in Richmond Hill if we have Punjabi speaking and six police officers in 102 or in 106 precinct that will make a difference. Do you have any power on getting those things uh, implemented or suggesting? So I have power in my office <coughs> and, and we uh, work very hard in making sure that my office looks like Queens County. That I know. <laughs> and, you know, we are recruiting from schools all mm -hmm. over the country. We are making sure that we have de uh, detectives who speak different languages. Uh, we make sure that um, the majority of Queens County is represented uh, in the office. I think that's extremely uh, important. I will tell you that this police commissioner is one of the best police commissioners in the 30 years that I have been in and out of elected office that I have worked with. She is responsive. She's in the community. She sees what's going on. Yeah, I see. Uh, and and, and she wants to respond to community interests while still understanding that she's the police commissioner mm -hmm. and she has a job to do. Um, and so I, I believe that uh, she is responsive to the community. I can tell you what I'm doing in my office, uh, which is to make sure that we have people who represent the great diversity of this borough. And uh, I know you have to leave before you uh, leave. Another question, in your office, do you have internship program where sure. uh, the people come out and uh, so when should they expect sure. to start that? That so, is something which I yeah. want you to really tell the people so that the young kids can understand and associate with the law and the, uh, how the system works here. So why don't I talk directly to the exactly. people at home? Yep. Um, I, I believe that uh, being a district attorney means that my people in my office the detectives and the assistant district attorneys must know the community. They go out to the community. I myself go to many uh, basketball games, food giveaways, law enforcement activities. I do all of it because I think the first time young people see me should not be when I'm coming to get them to put them in my courtroom. The first time a young person sees me or people in my office should be when I'm trying to keep them out of the courtroom to begin with. 
there has to be a relationship between the young people in the community and law enforcement. We try to foster that every single day. So in my office for high school students, we have volunteer programs, we have internship programs, we have explorer programs for the summer, uh, we have uh, internships and for college students as well, we have internships and programs that people can utilize. I'm afraid that a lot of the college programs are not paid, but the next year you have a letter of recommendation, hopefully, from a district attorney's office, and that can go a long way. For law students, we have internships that actually do pay. And so we want to make sure that the community knows that. They can apply at any time on the website for these internships. Um, we do have uh, uh, great programs to do that with. And I'm excited to be involved in the community, and I think it's important for law enforcement. There are those that, that wonder uh, you know, why we would have my staff uh, and be so involved. I don't think you can prosecute in a community you don't know. And I think it's irresponsible to prosecute in a community that you don't know. So we value the communication, we value the relationships, uh, and if you have events that you'd like to have an ADA come, for instance, if you have a civic association and perhaps you want uh, an assistant to talk about scams or to talk about deed fraud or to talk about identity theft or human trafficking, which we haven't touched on, but it's an important issue here in Queens County, we're happy to come out and talk about it. I think that education is key in fighting a lot of these crimes. Thank you. Uh, human trafficking is a totally that's uh, a long uh, issue to be discussed. We will do, and I know you have to go to attend an iftar. Thanks for coming iftar in. Event, I really yes. appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Appreciate and uh, we'll take a, a break right here, and uh, we will be right back with you. Welcome back to Mainstream. You just heard from Queens District Attorney. Uh, she's doing a great job and uh, she is uh, really uh, very reciprocative to the community and uh, that is what we need from our elected offices. The district attorney election is up. I don't want to talk about that because uh, she was not here as a, to campaign about it but uh, we're talking about the services which uh, are available to the community <coughs> which I was trying to get uh, for some time and uh, scheduling on their part and sometime on my part was not helping. But finally we made it, which is important. So now we are going to talk about uh, uh, some of the issues uh, which affect um, the upcoming uh, elections 2024, the US election, not the uh, elections in India, uh, which of course are also in 2024 and I uh, promise you that as the time comes close, I will definitely be talking about few other things and talking about my opinion uh, wherever uh, it matters to the people who want to pay attention and there are going to be people who are always going to look at <coughs> that I'm criticizing for no reason. Uh, I believe in one thing that criticism is always good as long as it is a constructive criticism. Criticism for the sake of criticizing is not really what I believe in. I still remember, you know, uh, the kids who were growing up with my kids when I spoke to them after the games or after looking at their uh, exams and their scores and stuff like that. I will always talk about them uh, to them and I always point out certain things. And one day one of the kids asked me, why you say all those things but you don't mention the other one and I told him I said listen the other things everybody else will mention because that is what you want to listen nobody will talk about what you need to listen not what you want to listen but what you need to listen there is a difference if we really sit back and think about it yes everybody you know uh, even myself including uh, we definitely would like somebody praising, oh, you are such a great person, da, 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 da. That there are very few people who will really pull you up for something which you are not doing right. I, I still remember my mom, even before, uh, till she died, she will still yell at me sometime uh, on certain things which she will feel like that I'm not right. And one of the things which I still remember and which is going to be there with me and... Um, that she always said to me too that I should learn how to speak 
sweet. I can't. I am what I am. I can't change it. And a lot of people, they assume that I'm trying to have argument and uh, fight. But no, that's not the issue. The issue is the issue, what the issue is, not how I speak and what I speak. What I speak, it does matter in the sense, if you will listen, if you will not listen, then whatever I speak, it doesn't matter. So that's one thing. Number two, <clears throat> I always talk about the freedom of press, freedom of speech. And on top of that, education. Right now, we have uh, sort of like, you know, they call it brain drain, but I personally will not call it a brain drain because brains are not even fully developed and they are leaving in hordes from Punjab and from uh, Haryana. And uh, what is happening actually when they leave Punjab and Haryana to come to uh, Western countries, that's a brain drain, even before the brain is fully developed. So that is what I, I always talk about, that, um, uh, that this is something I'm talking and I'm texting, also got a question here. Um, the issue is, um, the person after going to college, that's when you fully start learning and developing as a mature person and also somebody, somebody who really knows or wants to uh, know how he can reach where or she, he or she wants to uh, reach. Because up to the high school, you are just learning that some basics of education and some other stuff and from your family and friend you will definitely pick up some um, social uh, functioning. Even th that is now very restrictive because uh, of uh, the telephone, the smartphones, we just chat which I was just doing. And uh, also that actually had restricted our view, wider view of the situations because algorithm which is used by the companies will feed you what you hear or what you listen to. And you will re-listen to it, re-listen to it, and ultimately you become, uh, like they say, animal of their own habits. Over here you become an animal of the stuff which is being fed to you. And that has created the maximum um, a diversion within the uh, societies, the divide within the societies, the communities, that is something so much. It's unbelievable. That's where when there are issues, I always talk about we have uh, much bigger issues to discuss than just talking about AR-16, people and the kids getting shot. That should not be the thing which we should be talking about. We need to talk about how to make those kids compete nationally, internationally. And here we are talking about, oh, put up the more guns on the door, put up the more guards on the door. The kids are learning how to survive, hide themselves under the tables. Because our, the people who are supposed to make the laws to protect and who can carry and who cannot carry the guns, they are more interested in their pockets to get re-elected and give more freedom to the people. And then they say, oh, it's a, a mental issue. How come it is a mental issue? Is it a mental issue for the person who is doing what he's doing by buying the gun and going and shooting out? Or it's a mental issue to begin with for the people who originally have given the liberty and the freedom to that person to carry out an act which he will not, he or she will not be able to do unless the first act is not there. The first act is by the elected officials. So who actually has the uh, mental issues for me? That's a very compelling question for me and I still have to get the answer. I haven't. 
we have people getting elected to the offices like uh, George Santos who is running again for next year's election. What are we talking about? How does George Santos even can think of running again? Then we have, I'm, I'm not just taking Republicans, I'm uh, on the left side also, there are people who want, okay, this should be either my way or the highway. You know, they talk about, they have um, mutilated the progressive term by saying, oh, uh, these are progressive ideas. What is progressive ideas? Progressive ideas is progress to a better future, not for just you, but uh, for your kids also, you know. So, <clears throat> why? And now we have, uh, we just had uh, an NRA convention where everybody was there. And then we have this uh, governor in Florida, DeSantis. You know, on the one hand, Republicans always say, oh, we are for the corporation, we are for the businesses. And we have a Florida governor who is right now killing the Disneyland, which employs more than 500,000 people gives to the state close to $6 billion annually as a tax revenue. And, you know, everybody, when you talk to the kid, they're like, oh, I want to go to Florida for Disney World. If Disney World moves out of Florida, then what? I'm not saying it will happen, but he definitely is suggesting to put up a prison next to the Disney World. He may be just joking, but this, this is not a joke like allowing the people to carry the gun without having that training, without having a per, uh, permission. You can just walk into a, a gun store, buy the gun, and go out and shoot. For what? So those are the issues which are diverting. Yes, these are big issues. I'm not uh, diluting the importance of these issues. But at the same time, we should not forget there are other issues which are being pushed in the garb of these issues, restricting what you re read. <clears throat> I was uh, looking at uh, uh, one of the items the other day, how the Spanish culture is being eliminated from certain parts of the United States in certain states, even though in each and every war, the Spanish people fought with the uh, Caucasians. Texas and California, they are, they were actually part of uh, Spanish Mexico. They are not. So those are the issues which we need to take a look at. Those are the issues and we need to really sit back and look and think where we want our kids to be and where we are. With that note, until next time, good night and good luck.